G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, I thought we might take a look at what I consider to be the single best starter jet in War Thunder. A lot of players will sign up to War Thunder and play War Thunder with the anticipation of unlocking jets. And when they do that, they have a lot of questions. They have a lot of new things to learn. Prop combat is one thing, but jet combat is entirely different. And this particular plane contains, in my opinion, the best assets and the best characteristics in order to grease into that new game mode. There's lots to learn, and the best training wheels, I believe, come in the form of the F-88-5. But before we actually get into some gameplay of the F-88-5, I'd like to take 100 seconds to talk about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by a game I actually play. Raid Shadow Legends. No really, I actually play Raid on and off during my commute and have done so for almost a year. Raid Shadow Legends is a game where you collect champions and tailor them to your needs, whether it be the Doom Tower, Dungeons or PvP Arena. I've almost collected Clear Opteryx, a daily login champion who's very good for dealing with the Doom Tower. I'm also hoping to summon Coronar who pairs with my current favourite champion Minaya very well. My favourite part of Raid is that there is no single team that is the best. There's no one-size-fits-all, and there are so many variations of champions for so many different game modes. Raid is currently releasing a special champion chase event, where by logging in for 7 days between now and July 20, you can get your hands on a brand new champion from the High Elves faction, Deliana, who is excellent across the board. Raid is also releasing a new update with an update to the Tag Team Arena, as well as a bunch of events and tournaments where you can pick out some nice boosts just for playing. So, what are you waiting for? Download Raid Shadow Legends for free in the description below or use the QR code on screen. If you would like to stay and try the game out for a while, new signups will get 3 free champions and 30 XP brews to help level up for free. New players can also use the code MYDELIANA to get some extra goodies on top. Honestly, it's a great little game that I personally play to kill a little bit of time or to wind down. If you love collecting things and improving them, Raid will be a great pick for you too. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. So, what makes the F-80A5 such a great set of training wheels? The first thing that I can think of is of course the forward mounted 50 cals. You have six of them, they're M2 Brownings, and you should be somewhat familiar with these types of uh, weapons already. The American Tech Tree has a lot of planes carrying the M2 50 cal, and despite a lot of these being wing mounted, the nose mounted 50 cals here are similar. The only difference is that they require slightly different leading. Now if you consider the positioning and the speeds that you're traveling at, the nose mounted 50 cals will need to be led a little bit less. Those wing mounted 50 cals are a little bit further back, uh, and of course that will contribute to the way that they're led. You have to also remember that these are six guns in a very tight corner, so they're not going to spread as much as wing mounted guns. You have to remember that because you can't get those sort of spray patterns that you can with something like a Corsair or a P-51. You have to really concentrate your fire, but in my opinion, that is really, really going to pay off once you learn to sort of make those shots. Now, the F-80A is a plane, in my opinion, that has, again, those straight wings, which makes the difference, the transition, a lot more gentle. This plane has a sort of boom and zoom type playstyle, and a very sort of relaxed boom and zoom type playstyle. Those straight wings allow it to turn quite well, and the plane seems to be fairly lightweight for what it is. This gives you the ability to turn fight with a couple of jets, especially things like 262s and even the MiG-9, but it also allows you to regiment yourself in that energy fighter role. You do need to climb similar to a uh, like an early prop, uh, but you don't need to climb as vigorously, and of course, your speed is going to be your main thing. A lot of people transitioning from props to jets will quickly learn that a jet can travel pretty quickly. And sometimes, a jet maintains its best speeds in a straight line. War Thunder's meta, however, has shifted slightly to where climbing is a little bit more favourable. If you look at footage from 2014 or 2013, you'll rarely see larger groups of jet pilots in sort of 30 degree climbs or 20 degree climbs going to 6,000 meters because it, it just wasn't a way that people played back then. 
Nowadays, people are more invested in a climb and being at that sort of area where people are climbing above you can mean that you will have to also climb with them. Now, in this particular matchup, I'm in what looks like a full down tier. And I think as an F80A, you will tend to see these fairly often. You'll also tend to see those 7.7 .7 up tiers. But honestly, I wouldn't worry too much because this plane can handle itself even against the SU-11, which despite being at 7.0, deserves to be at 7.7. .7. Maybe I should make another video on that. You guys let me know in the comment section below. Now, the F-80A is, of course, a free-to-play jet, and I consider it to be one of the best jets in the game for that. Uh, it is really good. It's quite forgiving, as you will see. Uh, and judging by the gameplay here, it looks like all of my opponents are below me. Now, when they're below you, you have got a good advantage here, which means that you can exploit that speed, and you can see just how much speed I'm picking up here in a dive. Uh, not quite the same volume as I would in a prop, but here's the SU-9. I'm going to spray a little bit, and I've managed to kill him outright. I'm going to continue on, and what I'm going to do here now, I've got the KI-84 behind me. I'm going to put myself up into a vertical because I've gained 700, 800 kilometers per hour of speed. I have got a BI behind me, but I know the guy and he's extremely unlikely to go for me. So I'm going to leave it in this situation, but otherwise I probably would have pulled out into a straight line, waited for him to close the distance and then started turning because that thing compresses like you wouldn't believe. There he goes right behind me. You can see that he's, uh, he's a good buddy of mine. So I'd, I'd be a little, little annoyed, but either way it's, you know, all's fair in love and war, right? Speaking of all fair and love and war, uh, my shots here are terrible, and I managed to miss the KI-84. Once again, demonstrating that jets are definitely a lot heavier and a lot poorer at turning than props are. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put myself up into a vertical and uh, store that kinetic energy as potential energy, and then bring it back down in the form of a uh, boom maneuver or a, or a yeah boom maneuver. We're going to go in a dive. Look again for that KA-84, and he is just managing to get out of the way. I do a quick burst there on that uh, ME-262, but it looks like something happened, and I just didn't get the shots on. Maybe we can just blame that on my internet. Have a look at this maneuver here, where the uh, 262 is now in a stall climb for me, and because I've built up that energy, I'm able to just roll over, and the 262 can do pretty much nothing. I'm going to consider going for the KI-84 because I consider him to be the bigger threat, but I have an opportunity here to set the engine of the KI, uh, the 262 on fire, and we're going to go once again down for the KI-84. I only get some hits, but now that he's dead, that is a sure fire win for all of us. This is the type of situation that you will find yourself engaging in. You'll find that there are plenty of maneuvers where you have enemies in a cluster, and what you need to do is you need to be the one that booms and zooms in and out of them. If you tend to, or if you think that you might have blown too much altitude, you need to use your speed in this case. And jets can hold onto their speed a lot better than props can because that's kind of what they're built for. The uh, jets, on the other hand, have a bit of a trade-off. And that trade-off is their energy retention in a, uh, in a climb, their acceleration, and their climb rate. So you basically end up with this sort of phenomenon where the jets are really good for straight line speed and the props are really good for practically everything else. This kind of phenomenon, if you will, uh, replicates itself in biplane tier. You think about biplanes, they basically climb better than most props at, at the tier. They turn better, they have better energy retention. If you try and dogfight one, you'll just sort of have it sit on your tail and cry and that, that's all you'll, you'll basically be able to do. Now, in this case here, I'm demonstrating that uh, high volume of fire or that high concentration of fire in the JU-288 there, setting him on fire with a couple of well-aimed bursts. Now, with the 288s, I try not to engage them from behind, uh, but in the next clip coming up, you'll kind of see that I'm not really in a position to have any choice. Now, the F-80A does come with those 50 cals and you have plenty of ammunition, but you've got to remember they're still 50 cals. Even though there are six of them that are in uh, high concentration, that means that with bombers, you're not able to spray. So whilst you're not able to sort of get that weird sort of volume or that area, you're going to have a high density of fire. And that needs to be carefully aimed and carefully prepared. And when you're traveling at super high speeds where you might compress uh, or where you might overspeed, then, you know, you've got to consider that too. Jets are a bit of a sort of new step 
from props. There's a lot to learn. And just by playing Jets, just by you know making mistakes, learning about what you did, and maybe experimenting with a couple of different things, you can really sort of improve your performance. Now, this plane, I that was one of the planes that I sort of really learned on, the PADA. It was just one of those things that I struggled with a lot. I struggled with the guns primarily. I'm very much used to the guns in the wings, and I just, for the life of me, could not get my guns on target. It was just, I was just a terrible shot. Now, 50 cals, I'm not sure were as potent as they are now. Um, I think they were quite weak when I had the PADA or the FADA in my hands, but in this case now, they're quite good. And I tend to use the tracer belts. They are the ones that I believe give me the best performance. And of course, if you're struggling to lead, then the tracer belts can potentially help out. You can see I'm using those tracer belts to figure out exactly where I need to put the guns. And on this 288 here, I'm I'm very, very desperately trying to avoid that rear 20 mil. Now the uh, 288 is going to be slower. And of course, this is a jet that you're actually, sorry, a jet, a bomber that you're actually going to encounter quite a lot. So knowing how to defeat it is going to be your number one key. The best thing you can do is use your absolute advantage with jets, and that is your speed. Now, in this case here, I don't really have much speed to speak of because we're all at altitude, but in this case, he's the last guy left. I'm just going to spray what I've got and hope for the best. And it looks like I've set him on fire again, but unfortunately he takes my wing off. But you know what? That gives me the ace there with kill number five. But you know, enough bomber hunting. That's, that's three bomber kills for an ace. Not too bad. I wonder how going up against fighters will, uh, will turn out here. And that's exactly what we're going to have a look at. This is the next match uh, that I'm going to show. This is the final match. We have a bunch of enemies here. A lot of them are Russians. And the Russian jets, I find that you'll have a very easy time against. There are a couple of Italian or uh, British jets, rather, the Vampire. Uh, I believe it's the British or the Italian Vampire. Um, but I, I can't quite remember. You'll see, however, the battle has been sort of dragging on for a little bit. I'm a, I'm a touch late to the party. But that's okay, because I can swoop in and take a couple of easy kills here. You can see that I've gone up into a slight vertical here to get some distance away from the crowd. And at the same time, this gives me enough distance to try and push after the Kika here. I'm going to go maybe for a couple of cheeky sprays. I know the 50 cals have an insane range of like more than 2 km, or more than 1.5 kilometers. But that's enough for me. And I'm just going to gently, gently turn around. I'm not going to sort of hammer the, the up elevator key. I'm just going to gently turn around and try and preserve all that energy to go into the next engagement with a lot of speed. And you can see the speed here I'm pulling. It's about 700 kilometers per hour, and I don't want to be dropping too much further below 700 kilometers per hour, especially with a vampire in tow. And uh, I'm going to now take this next opportunity to pick up the MiG-19 that's decided to turn right in front of my guns. Now, why do I say 700 kilometers per hour? Because I find 700 kilometers per hour to be the happy medium here. The vampire has pretty good acceleration and is without a shred of a doubt, the biggest threat on the enemy team here. And I need to close that distance rapidly. So the moment that that vampire turns and bleeds any of its energy, I need to be able to swoop in and take it out. So what I'm doing here, as he's going around on a uh, horizontal turn, I'm going to go for the vertical turn, st stirring, stirring, storing up that energy. And as he comes down to engage that uh, other teammate there, I managed to pilot snipe it. And using those teamwork using that cluster is where the FADA, in my opinion, shines the best. It's one of those planes that needs a bit of teamwork. You can't sort of be on your own. Having a couple of friends around with you will drastically increase your performance on the battlefield. Now, at this point in time, we have an ME262 and a Kika, and both of these planes are faster. The ME262 is a really tough plane to fly, in my opinion. I've genuinely never had success in the 262. Even even the C2B, I've only had marginal success. But uh, this 262 made it really easy by flying in a straight line, and I've just gone and crit him. So hopefully that can be kill number four. If not, that'll be a nice assist to add to the bag. Now, the Kika is the real threat here. I believe the Kika has better engines, and so is going to be not only a larger threat, but uh, it's going to be the threat. And if he doesn't plonk himself into the ground, which he doesn't here, he's got plenty of energy to spare on us. And this is where we end up with a bit of a problem. The 262 is coming back, and I'm very convinced that he's just going to full commit to a head-on. I'm just going to go for a quick burst there, 
get nothing, and I think the Spitfire is going to basically clean him up. I've noticed the Kika is going back around, uh, and, sorry, it's going, going away, and so that leaves me with the 262, and the 262, you know, he can't be alone. He needs some friends too, and uh, more so than ever because he's a bit of a bit of a chonky boy. The 262, the first operational fighter jet, ends up being a uh, dog's breakfast, which is almost where I end up. But um, just as the Kika comes in, I manage to turn out of the way. Now you can turn better than the Kika. The Kika does have better energy retention than you, and the Kika does have, I believe, better acceleration. So consider this thing like a brother or a cousin to the SU-11, uh, because the SU-11 kind of performs the same way. Now, the Kika, because he's got more speed, and because he hasn't forced, or it was me that was forced to do that really aggressive turn, we're pretty much got nothing for him. We have to wait for the Kika to come in and make a critical mistake, otherwise we're pretty much just like trying to get the upper foot here, the upper hand. We're just sort of any any foot in the door that we can possibly scrounge out of this dogfight, which is altitude and turning. So these are the things that I need to consider. Now, both of the F-84G and the Kika, which are the last remaining enemies on the team, have gone over to the airfield for a little bit of R&R, uh, &R, if you will. Let's let's put it nicely. Let's call it R&R. &R. But realistically, they're uh, sitting around the AA waiting for it to do its job. And of course, it does do its job in killing the Meteor F there. And uh, F indeed in the chat for the Meteor. This leaves me in a fairly hairy situation, but I'm just going to wait for the F-84G to come out from hiding. And it looks like he has, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drop in underneath him. I'm just gonna drop in there, and there's pretty much nothing to it. The F-84G has been caught with the pants truly down, and it's only a matter of time before I land my shots instead of being a potato. Any second now, any second now, and it looks like he's carrying something on the hard points too, or at least had some provisions there for it. So there's really nothing the F-84 can do. He's super heavy. He's been caught with his pants down. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote for the F-84. It's just a matter of time. Now remember, as you can see from this video, and as you can see from a lot of my prop videos, if you set yourself up well, if you set up your approach, you basically have a free run. There's nothing that your opponents can do because you can energy trap your opponents so well. And the F-80A the, the sort of follows that mantra. It's just so good at this either dogfight, like in and out type maneuvers, or alternatively, it's good for those energy maneuvers where you can get the upper hand on your opponent and really rub them into the dirt. But ladies and gentlemen, there goes the ace. The timer runs out and that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, of course, to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. These guys are going to help me basically buy a new GPU when the next line of NVIDIA RTX, uh, I think it's the 4000 series, come out. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.